Today is a really good day because we'll be testing out some budget upgrades here and we have stainless steel braided brake hoses here should improve pedal feel and the same goes for this one here a clutch hose we also have for faster shifting a do-it-yourself clutch stop and for better handling we have strut braces front and rear and we even have a free mod of weight reduction and speaking of free, uh, we'll start with the most expensive option, the braided steel brake hoses. The entire premise for these is that these here won't expand during braking and the rubber ones will. But that's a very easy way to test that. I overhauled the brakes in an earlier episode, front and rear, and all hoses are new right around here, which is it's actually one centimeter exactly. And for the rear, it seems to be a tiny bit smaller. Nope, one centimeter as well. Let's try and break them with the assist on, and then we can do a new measurement. Jeg skal have startet bilen, og så skal jeg bare, når den lige har kørt et par sekunder, så skal du prøve at træde på bremsen, sådan ret hårdt. På træden. Maybe 10.1, but even this is a stretch. As you just saw, I had my wife repeatedly step on the brakes. If there even was a measurable difference between non-braked and braked, it's a 0.1 millimeter, if any, but honestly, it could come down to how firmly I simply do the measurements. So I'd say that it's kind of debunked, but that doesn't mean that we won't be able to tell a difference once we install them and go for a drive. No, that just means that at least these here don't actually expand. First, we'll take this one here, a size 11. Now, this one here will keep dripping. Then we should be able to break this loose. Then we'll grab a new one. Just turn this there, spray it down. Then we can remove something like this. And for the rear one here, I'll start with unclipping it on the trailing arm. And off it goes. This here, filled with Bosch Dot 4, a size 9, and some tubing, we're now gonna bleed the brakes. Leaving the brakes here with this one is honestly super simple and it's one of my favorite tools. After having worked with cars for many years, uh, bleeding brakes was never really easy, but this one here I actually feel like it's easy. And this is a just a cheap one from AutoZone or stuff like that, you know, the generic one. I always start with the one furthest from the brake master cylinder. Install a hose, have the hose higher than the actual caliber, open. And now we have clear fluid. Good. The reason why it's red is because I rebuilt uh, these calibers here using some red grease. And uh, although I have bled them before, it would appear that now the red grease has started to dissolve or something. It, I'm just guessing here, but usually it's not red. Lots of air here as well.
Now, what I like to do is press the brake pedal a few times, smack every caliber with a hammer a few times, and then I bleed it again. And taking a closer look at this gauge here, we still have plenty of pressure uh, left. I'll just uh, slap on some wheels and then we're ready to test the uh, braided brake hoses here. And uh, I'm pretty excited because it's just one day since I drove it. So I do remember how the OE uh, hoses felt. And being that we now know that the OE hoses don't expand. Well, uh, it is uh, pretty exciting to see whether or not we are still able to tell a difference uh, in the actual braking performance or just the brake pedal feel, really. And now we're ready for a drive. And out testing the pedals, what I haven't shown you is I've actually changed both the pedal rubbers for both pedals here and I've also changed the bushings that sit further up. But I changed them so that we'd have a more fair comparison. It did actually change the play a little bit but it's honestly not a whole lot and there weren't any uh, noticeable wear on the old ones. The driving with the new brakes here, they actually feel a lot more responsive so to say. I don't have to push quite as much on the uh, brake pedal before it actually starts braking. Even just pushing it very little like this will have it braking. Whereas before with the rubber ones, it seemed like I had to push a little harder before it actually started uh, braking. So if anything, the brake pedal is actually now a bit more touchy. My best guess is that the old hoses did actually expand, but it's it must have been an expand that were taking place inside that the inside diameter changed a little bit when you stepped on the brake. I'm not really sure and if you know uh, more than I do, uh, please let me know. And that leads us to the clutch pedal here instead. Will the clutch hose expand? That hose is not new. I don't know how old it is, but it does look very old. There's really only one way to find out. And uh, now would normally be the time where I do some kind of uh, do-it-yourself or mini tutorial on how I went about and changed the clutch hose. But uh, the GoPro uh, kind of just crapped out on me and didn't include the sound from uh, this little guy here. So I have uh, tons of footage of me changing it out, uh, even having uh, my wife uh, help me out with measuring whether or not the stock clutch hose here actually expands or not. Um, spoiler alert, it, it doesn't at all. Uh, even though this is very worn and old, it, it definitely doesn't expand uh, once the clutch is, uh, it, well, it's actually disengaged. Uh, either way, I did go out and uh, change it. Uh, so uh, now we just need to figure out, uh, does this uh, <laughs> change from stock to a stainless steel braided one, does that uh, result in a a different pedal or a better pedal or anything that we can even uh, uh, feel. It actually feels as if it's a little bit uh, firmer, so to say. Any other benefits, uh, I can't really think of them. It just feels as if it's a bit more of a firm pedal. I don't know if it's placebo because I just changed it and uh, bled it and so on, but it, it does feel a bit more uh, firm. And being that we now know the braided hoses uh, have an effect, but it's honestly not that much, I'm very tempted to find out uh, what, what effect will a do-it-yourself clutch stop have. Theoretically, it should improve, or should I say decrease the time spent between, uh, for instance, a first and second gear, but really just uh, any gear, because you won't have to depress the clutch quite as far thus uh, less time between shifts. And it's uh, honestly just a furniture leg, M10 fret a furniture leg here with an accompanying uh, fill pad I also bought. Uh, so now we really just kind of need to figure out what uh, depth should this be installed at. And I think the easiest way of figuring out what the height of the clutch stop should be is with the engine starter, then we'll just try and Release this slowly and see when the car starts to tilt forward. 
right now in neutral I'll disengage the clutch put it in first here we have the original clutch stop we can simply unscrew it with our fingers and with this small cap here removed I simply take this and screw it in let's see how far it will go very far actually then I'll grab a small piece of tape here and then we can unscrew it again so we know we can use about 25 millimeters or, is, or what is equivalent to one inch in fret depth and we somewhat know the height of the pedal so I'm actually thinking that if we make the full length right around where this uh, red tape here ends then we'll be on maybe on the high side but we can always cut it further down let's let's try that And we can even add a second knot to kind of lock it in once it's at the height we need. So let's just screw this guy here in and tighten this down a bit. There, now this won't move. And for the felt pad here, we'll just add that there. Let's, uh, let's test it and compare the results to the old uh, Draghi data. It feels like the throw has just been uh, decreased by 50% or so. Obviously that is not the case, but it feels a lot more drastic. Let's try and do a first to second. And uh, back from testing this clutch stop here, uh, I ended up cutting it down for a total length of 48 millimeters. But uh, here's the thing, I won't really recommend you do it uh, yourself because this uh, mod here, while it's uh, very uh, noticeable uh, because there's so much uh, less uh, travel, well, it doesn't actually translate into any gains, at least none that I can measure. If we take a look at the data I have from uh, how much time spent between shifts uh, doing 0 to 60 runs uh, before the clutch stop. And then we compare it to after the clutch stop, or that is with the clutch stop installed. Uh, you'll be able to see that uh, it's basically the same and uh, that's also what leads me to uh, don't uh, really bother the BMW clutch stop uh, the original one is already good enough and it's uh, sufficiently low uh, enough that if your hose actually starts ballooning if uh, your slave cylinder uh, maybe it doesn't expand quite as much whatever there will be some uh, room for error uh, i believe it's called where it will still disengage the clutch fully but maybe uh, you have a different experience with the clutch stops and if you do uh, please let me know with all that being said uh, now comes uh, some of the easier uh, mods which actually should translate into uh, more tangible gains and we'll start with a strut brace here then 20 newton meters These here I don't have the torque figures for, so these will just be a, a, a good and tight. 
And this here must be one of the easiest masks you can perform on your car, but the real one though, that one isn't as easy. All right, out testing the front uh, strut bar. Keep in mind, I am running a stock suspension setup, stock MTEC, uh, and uh, that's not that has a lot of body roll, but uh, let's see how it, uh, it goes with this uh, strut bar here installed, because it should improve the uh, stability of the car, or uh, it should at least offer a reduced flex uh, of the car going into a corner or or just really uh, dr driving about. It should ha have stiffened it up uh, quite a bit and, and thus uh, at, at least turning uh, should be better. Let's see how it uh, does. Wow. I wouldn't say it has complete, completely transformed the car, but it has uh, changed it for the better. And uh, so far, literally no downsides. This has actually improved the handling much more than I have dared hope for. I'm a hundred percent sure by now that this is uh, this is a very uh, great mod, honestly. And I I bought uh, mine uh, used, which means there were not <laughs> a whole lot of money, and uh, it's been quite some time since I've spent this little money and gotten so much in return. So uh, a big, uh, a big uh, recommendation from me to actually install it because it, it feels like there are no uh, downsides to this at all. Uh, better cornering, um, more stable, more planted, less body roll even, and this is on a stock suspension, mind you. Uh, but it does, however, uh, pose the question though, how will the real one uh, do? Because the real one wasn't ever included on an E46. Whereas the front one here was included on the M3 version. Even still, uh, we need to go home and, and test it to see is there a difference. And if, if there isn't, so much better. And if there isn't, well, then we don't need to actually waste our money buying it. And even though I planned on showing you a drive and obviously also uh, how to install this uh, rear strut brace here. Uh, well, um, I'm actually not gonna do so because as it turns out, the rear one doesn't really offer any benefit, honestly, at least none that I could tell. And again, it also would make sense that uh, it wouldn't change anything or at least not have us as drastic as an impact as the front one had. And I don't know if you uh, have noticed this, but we've actually uh, tested all the mods from uh, cheap uh, to uh, cheaper. And uh, now we get to the only mod that is actually a free mod. And I guess it's uh, not really even a mod. Check this out. We're essentially just removing stuff, which again is why it's a, f it's a free uh, mod, so to say. But how much weight can we remove just from this uh, trunk area here? And uh, how will it affect uh, both the handling, but maybe more importantly, how will it affect uh, the acceleration capabilities? I have a lot of data where we accelerate from 50 to 110 in third gear. Uh, usually it takes around 6.3 seconds or so. Maybe if we remove 20, 30, 40 kilos, who knows? Maybe it will uh, translate into a faster car, at least in the straights. Let's see uh, how much weight we can remove. Six point five kilos, two kilos, one kilo, thirteen kilos, one 
one and a half kilo. Hmm, that's 25 kilos or so. I really doubt that'll be enough to show up in the uh, 50 to 110 kilometer per hour sprint, but I do know of one place where we can shed 28 kilos by just uh, unbolting uh, one uh, electrical connector and four bolts. And that is uh, the seats here. These seats here weigh 28 uh, kilos each. So let's just unbolt them really. It's a beautiful seat, but holy hell, it's heavy. Somewhat empty here. And without a seat here, uh, that means we are now down 53 kilos or so. I'm not sure this is enough, but let's just see what happens. And there we have the airbag light from <laughs> removing the seat. So mm, whatever. And the way we test it, how much faster it has become. Third gear, 50 to 110, like this. Start low, hits 50, data record starts happening. And then 110, boom. Let's do another one. Feels faster. I honestly think it is faster. I'll keep uh, repeating this uh, uh, test here 10 times and then we'll average it out. And back from testing the weight reduction. Well, I've been doing a lot of these uh, 50 to 110, staying in third gear and pretty consistently it has been around 6.3 seconds. At least in the configuration we are now running with a fully stock exhaust and all that. But uh, after removing 53 kilos, well, Six point zero seconds. That's actually a lot of better, almost the equivalent of slapping on some headers. So I'm uh, honestly uh, super uh, uh, surprised. I knew there were uh, some uh, differences when you shed uh, <laughs> enough weight, but uh, in general, um, uh, this is actually a uh, pretty good. And the best I was able to do was a five point. 88 eight seconds or so which was simply unheard of and by far the best time I've uh, ever done uh, in this car here so uh, uh, super excited next video we'll do some detailing because uh, this E46 here is extremely dirty and I even have some new wheels uh, for it and uh, actually also uh, bought some tires so uh, pretty excited about that and and then we'd uh, pop, uh, probably do uh, uh, like a super service video as well but but I don't know, this uh, weight uh, removal uh, thingy here, uh, if you want to see more of uh, how far can we get without uh, destroying anything in the car or doing anything that we can't uh, reverse, uh, well, uh, let me know in the comments, please. Uh, and uh, with all that being said, just a, a big thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful or interesting, please consider liking or subscribing. Bye.